Hello gamers, my name is Boulevard, and today I wanted to check out the highest win rate deck on the ladder currently, which turns out to actually be Mist Rates, which I'm not gonna lie, was pretty surprising to me. There's not a very high play rate, only about 200 and something games recorded, if I remember correctly, but it is sitting at a solid 60% win rate. Now, the reason that this surprises me is because the second highest win rate deck, Swain Misfortune, plays a little bit more like Pirates, which tends to be so low to the ground that you can kind of outpace your opponent's removal with all of the one and two drops that you have available. Something like Mist Rates is a little bit more mid-range, a little bit more susceptible to a constant stream of removal. And with the number one deck being Ezreal Seraphine, and given that that deck main decks cards like Blade's Edge, even your one health tools like Stygian Onlooker and Phantom Butler feel like they're kind of getting the short end of the stick. So I've given the deck a few tries so far. It hasn't been going great, but they've been really weird games like I lost to a Nivea Aurelian soul because they just play Avalanche, which was pretty much all it took, which is one of the reasons that uh, decks like this are not really my forte. You know, if the opponent can stabilize against you, it feels really hopeless. The Harrowing is back in here. Uh, when I started playing Red Gwen earlier in the season, I had cut down on Harrowings because Ionia Seraphine was so popular. Now most players are on the Noxus variant, so the Harrowing is actually a great closer against those Seraphine decks. But the main struggle I have been having is just the relatively low health total on my units. And I guess part of it is that this deck... This list specifically is not main decking any copies of Mark of the Isle, while others do. What they tend to cut for it is the Risen Mists. So if you are struggling with the Ezreal Seraphine like I have been, cut the Risen Mists, put in the Mark of the Isles so that you have a little bit more survivability on your units to push the damage. And that is really the main difference I've seen amongst the lists from the players that are going for it. So this is a list I took off from Terra AR, and let's get into some gameplay, see what the highest win rate deck in the game looks like right now. The Nocturne buffs that came in a while back, I don't actually remember what patch it was on, but changed from needing to attack with Nightfall units to just Fearsome units, has really helped this archetype a lot. This is an Elise Nocturne deck, in case you didn't get to see it in there. The only Noxus card is Precious Pets, so that we can go ahead and hopefully avoid Mist Allegiance triggers, especially because I am playing, you know, the Risen Mists as well, so I've got even more Mist Wraith Reliance than a normal variant. Now, I want to play on Curve while I can. I'm not sure... I want to be this curve heavy against Ezreal Seraphine, but honestly, given my lack of Mark of the Isle, I don't really see myself needing the spell mana for too much. And I'd like to get a Wraith Train going so that I can get into a really impactful harrowing down the line. I think the only thing I'd really like out of this hand is I'd, I'd prefer if my Mist Wraith and Wraith Caller were my champions if I had a Lee and Nocturne. You know, I'd feel pretty good, but it is what it is. We'll keep this and see how it goes. Check how... Just mid-ranging my opponent down goes. Because even if, like, I trade my one drop for a Blade's Edge, and then I trade my two drop for a Mystic Shot, um, like, the three drop comes down, and either... Ten, typically, these decks only main deck, like, one copy of High Note, so it's got to be, like, second Mystic Shot, and eventually I start to get to develop, or at least get my opponent to so replay so many on. redundant spells well, that they're no longer progressing the Seraphine level up. And, like, Flock is not particularly impactful against me. Now, I went for Arachnoid Horror instead of Mist Wraith because I want to go for Skitterer here, and I will probably develop uh, just double Wraith Caller a little bit down the line. If I open attack, I'm probably only getting through two damage. If I Skitterer and I get... Even if I Skitterer and get Sentried, I'm still probably pushing through more damage. So because my opponent is so limited on mana here, I think I think it's correct to run out the Skitterer, which is part of the reason that I played the Horror. Yeah, so like, this is fine. I'm still pushing uh, three damage here, which is more than I would have. Unless, unless it's like block Blade's Edge, but if they... Yeah, I was going to say, if they opened with Blade's Edge, they probably would have just gotten this off the table immediately. Okay, no flock either. That's actually really good for me, I guess, since that's one of the few flock activators that they sort of have. This is where things are going to get a little tricky. I'm going to be... Like, I'm going to have a really awkward turn 5. So I kind of just have to set up a decent open attack. But, like, Wraith Caller is not Don't the best the open attack just because it is walkable, especially into a fan club president. We've only got two Noxus cards left in the deck. The only thing in here is the three Precious Pet. I've seen a couple people on one Arachnoid Sentry, but I don't feel like that's the kind of direction I want to be going right now. Here I could Wraith Caller again. Could also run out a few Mist Wraiths, but I think I like the Wraith Caller line. 
The only real punish my opponent has here, outside of whatever nonsense fan club president made, would be like a second arachnoid sentry. We're not even on like the back alley bar turn. So I don't think I don't think we're finding lethal here. But yeah, there's no universe where we do actually. I only have eleven fearsome damage. So the very worst if they want to sack their seraphine, who currently at zero. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> We'll kind of have to see what this fan club president can get out, but I'm hoping my opponent has a slightly awkward hand, maybe some some disintegrates, some copies of... Uh, I don't even remember the name of the five mana draw to. Okay. No development out of my opponent. I don't think attack order matters at all here. Are you going to the I leveled my Nocturne already. That's pretty cool. Nocturne can get... Um, really impactful when you can get down like wraith collars or even just like fading memories like a couple precious pets to just run out multiple units to continuously reduce the attack of your opponent's board not something that comes up in this matchup but honestly i don't really care like they're so far away from the seraphine level i don't think this is something i'm realistically gonna have to worry about too much this game okay so we got a whale and a static shock yeah that is a really good fan club president hit a lot of wind out of my sails next, next turn is probably like baiting play wraith caller so i get a permanent mist wraith okay if they clear my board here huh i think i'm gonna start with mist wraith I'd actually prefer them to attack so that I can make more board space, but it doesn't look like that is going to be the case. I don't think I'm dying anytime soon, so I've, got, I've still got a few turns to get down this harrowing. So I'm just going to run out my board, try to make them clear it. This is probably... Yeah, I'm just going to fading and replay the Wraith Caller so that I have another Wraith. I still have Risen Mists for the open. Um, is that the line I want to go? Risen Mists open? Like, if I'm fading a, a Wraith Caller, then I can't Risen Mists. Unless they kill something. Which is unlikely, I think. At least... Not great either. I could just fading a Wraith. I don't think I love that, though. And I'm worried that if I... If I make too many Wraith Callers, then my Harrowing's just gonna be awkward where I summon, like, three Wraith Callers and three Mists. So, actually, I think it might be fading a Mist here. Do I fading fan club president? I don't want to rely on that. I don't think fading this is awful, but... I do want to develop, because my opponent is a very, like, in-combat-oriented deck. I think you need to constantly be developing against Ezreal Seraphine. And if they clear out any unit, I can, I can play Elise and then Risen Mist. Okay. Careful. Thing tangles real easy. Start to trade boards here. Hopefully push at least a little bit of damage, but ultimately I'm kind of relying on a harrowing on the next attack turn to I... really get things done. No way they level Seraphine here. So it looks like this is going down, which honestly not great for me because it just opens them up to play another Seraphine and get another random two mana spell. Granted, I don't know that there's a two mana spell that they can get off a second Seraphine that is actually better than just getting a high note, like it's playing say like playing Seraphine's high note, even if it's not doubled up, just like having that Mystic Shot available. It was Moonlight Affliction. Oh, they hit the Ephemeral though. A little bit of a misordering. That's going to persist in the next turn. Not that it, like, really matters, because I don't think I'm going to need it as a blocker, but it is just one of those things. Willing to go to two. I do play a Doom Beast. Whoa, okay. You sound great. All right, no longer willing to give up the Seraphine. I say, as if I could possibly do anything about this. A lot of pain in combat, real. You can get your Seraphine kind of healthy again. I think I'm just going to be stuck on a few... Okay. As real does mean that I actually get to clear out a little bit more of my board, which is kind of nice. 
I don't miss. Thinking about throwing a weapon on your Ezreal. Combat reel seems fine. Or just bar. Uh, and I'm in an awkward spot where, like, I don't really want to develop here. <laughs> yeah. The, the Mystic Shot's only Watch one mana still, learn. so... I don't love that this is going to be left over, but, like, honestly, it's not that big of a deal, I think. I don't know what my harrowing is reviving, like, how many Wraith Call- I think it's- Oh, man, is it three Wraith Callers already? No, it's only two, right? Okay, so it's, it actually is grabbing Mist Wraiths first, so that's pretty good. Uh, I don't think I die to Ezreal Seraphine here. They have a bar- they have 10 mana. They're two off of each level up. Kind of sucks I didn't hit, um, like, a Frenzied Skitterer. I don't, I don't think I'm winning here. My hope is that I can kill their Ezreal and Seraphine. <laughs> Maybe it was better to develop and save the harrowing, but it, given that they have both champions, I'm not convinced that I'm making it to my next attack turn. You know what I mean? Especially if I if I just run out this rather mediocre board of like Elise Boisterous Host. Like, top decking the second Elise made it the right play to harrowing, but I don't know that it's the correct play. The difference there being, and I've spoken on this before, but like the correct play is sort of what the stats tell you you should be doing, and the right play is the one that actually works. Um, so you always want to play towards the correct play, and you want to hope that it is also the right play. Um, and in an ideal situation, a lot of times the correct play and the right play are the same, but, you know, if your opponent has, like if they're again. playing three Ruination and three Withering Whale, vale, and they only have one card in hand, and you're like, okay, well, if I open attack, I lose to Withering Whale, but if I summon something, then I lose to Ruination, then, like, there is no correct play, assuming that they play, like, three copies of each, um, but the right play is whichever one they end up not having, if that's a better way for you to understand what I'm saying. What do they spend mana on other than this? Where did their, all their mana go? Oh, they drum soloed. <laughs> I was like, this thing only put them at, like, 9 mana. Where's the rest of it? Uh, and that should... Oh, no. That is actually not... Um... Yeah, they didn't have flow active, so the card shouldn't be cost reduced. Because landmarks and equipments don't count. So they only played Mystic Shot last turn. They got two spells queued up, though, which is probably enough, assuming that it's things that kill... It's like, High Note, Mystic Shot. Disintegrate, Blade's Edge. High Note. So good, I surprised myself. I know Blade's Edge static shot. Looks like they're taking like zero damage here. Am I saying this correct? Stage amp. All right, let's oh. jam. Nailed that one. Maybe this is um just a bad matchup if you're not playing uh what's it called? No. What is it called? Um, Mark of the Isle. But I did kill the Ezreal and the Seraphine. So, like, there's a chance that I live here. It's not a high chance, but even if their hand already has Seraphine and Ezreal in it. No, I'm taking a lot of damage, actually, because they have weapons. But, okay, yeah, there's another Ezreal. That's probably enough to kill me. I'm hoping that my music doesn't come through my microphone. So that I, I like obviously you can see that like I'm not wearing a headset or headphones or anything. I just like I actually don't own a headset. Um I just <clears throat> I always just play my audio through my speakers and my mic is usually good enough that like I don't get any sort of feedback on that. Like you're not gonna pick up what my speakers are picking up on my microphone. 
It usually works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and I have to like adjust the volumes, but I tend to listen to like really loud music when I play. All right, we got TF Swain, we got an uh, Onlooker. I really don't like Onlooker in matchups where my opponent has Make It Rain. I feel like the Wraith Caller lines are going to work out a little bit better here. But if my opponent just levels Swain, I'm pretty screwed. I don't really have any way to defend against that. So we've kind of just got to hope that these rates are enough. And they should be. TF Swain historically is pretty weak to Fearsome. Okay, maybe not when they open double Watchful Idol, but... You know, I've got a good train of mists here. Unfortunately, I'm not attacking on the off turn because now like, I don't really have anything to do with this other two mana. Playing an onlooker on an off turn is not great. There's a death sand. I can't even like, I, I mean like I can attack next turn. I'm gonna have to attack next turn, but like my opponent, the one thing I called out at the beginning was, oh yeah, if my opponent levels Swain, I'm kind of screwed. And they immediately open with two mana level Swain, make a six, six. Actual worst case scenario, I think. But they only have four cards in hand, so maybe they don't have Swain. I probably just have to attack with everything next turn anyway. And if they have an Arachnoid Sentry here, then yeah, it's just kind of an awkward time. Or if I miss Allegiance. Okay. I actually just like can't hear the music at all now. I, I rather I can like I can hear the beat, but I can't hear anything other than the beat. Uh, yeah, we're just going with everything. Swain's already leveled, so like trying to deny them flock doesn't really matter at all. And if they play Swain here, I might just have to concede. Well. Not immediately, because I do have Nocturne, so I actually can go after the Swain. But if going after the Swain doesn't work, then I think I do just have to kind of scoop it up. Because I'm I, like I have to take the board wipe. I have to try. I have to like block the Swain, push some damage onto this it, and then that is not what I expected. Okay. Sure. We can, we can really just run out everything here. I don't really care about getting... Well, do I have mana to Risen Nocturne? I do. Is that what I want to do? Yeah, maybe. Just pull this to the side with the boisterous host. Gonna level Nocturne. Not that it like really matters. So my other option was like onlooker into Nocturne. Okay, and make it rain hits my two. <laughs> One health units, which um. Do I want to push damage or do I want to kill this? Because I do have uh, Hallowed. This would be 8 damage. I don't think I have enough reach. I think like, I just need to kill the unit where I can. Having leveled Nocturne is cool and does now mean that my board doesn't get wiped by Swain, but it does mean that like I will lose the Nocturne. Packed him good. Okay. Um, I think I actually just have to like try to outpace the keg, but I, I want to pass here because I currently have enough mana to just run out all of my units next turn. I'll play one. I'll play one unit. 
just because I have the ability, like in case I top deck like a Wraith Caller or something, I want to have the mana to still play every single unit. Okay, but essentially what I have to try and do is just get wide enough around whatever they have. Empire above all. That's not great. That is not great. Loyalty through conquest. Uh, if I play another unit and they worst case is like Death's Hand this, because then my Nocturne is stunned. I only have like what two Hallowed units? Yeah, two Hallowed Deaths. So I could go like. I mean, it's just swing out, right? Put this in front. This looks good. Okay. <laughs> well, that worked. I, I, I've played... I think I played like five games with this before I hopped on camera. It's been going pretty poorly, which... There's a reason that the deck is not popular, right? Like, the clickbait here is that it's the highest win rate deck. There's a reason that it's not very popular. Part of that, obviously, is that just, like, this late in the season, people don't love gravitating towards aggro. That tends to be an earlier meta adaptation if aggro isn't that strong. And, like, this is kind of aggro, arguably aggro. All right, we got two decks here that do not play on defense well. Uh, I mean, like, they don't play Deny, so I can Harrowing them, but they're kind of... Who has the attack token? Okay. They... Yeah, I don't have the attack token on 7. The only reason I would keep Harrowing is if I'm trying to withstand the Hecarim attack on 6 into my Harrowing on 7, but, like, I can't Harrowing on 6. They just gotta, like, develop Hecarim on 6 and then, like, play even more stuff before they go in on 7. Hand's not looking super clean, but... Okay. I think Onlooker actually gets some good value in this matchup. All of their sort of backline units are only to attack. Like, they have a lot of 2-3s. Speak of the devil. Kind of awkward for me is that I'd like to... Fading Memories to run out an Onlooker train... But I'd also love to Nocturne this. Like, just getting... They have so few units that actually matter. Like, Nocturne can do really well. But in order for that to work, I would have to, like, play one of the onlookers now and then fading it and play Nocturne. Like, I think I'm just... This could just be, like, a Mist's onlooker, onlooker turn, though. I don't have to Nocturne this. But if they, if I like go Mists and Stygian and they just play, play Onslaught of Shadows, they just have two Fearsome Blockers and I'm in a, a really awkward spot. So I actually think I do have to get this off the field. I don't hate fading on this. I don't really want to, but I, I kind of have to, I feel. And I think I am just going to take this out with the Phantom Butler. I don't really want to lose my Nocturne to a Twin Disciplines. And I don't hate getting my Hallowed into the death pool. Kind of where my head is at. And I don't think they have Zed. I think they would have just Zedded last turn instead of open attacking. Are we just running out a ephemeral thing anyway? Yeah. Okay, so good read on the Onslaught. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I'm kind of screwed to Twin Disciplines either way, right? So I can either, uh, either I attack this and Twin saves it, or I can attack with Nocturne and Twin trades, and I think I'm fine trading, like, if they want to have this kill Nocturne. Okay, yeah. So it's either, either way, like, Twin lets it live if they want to Twin on defense. But if they wanted to twin offensively, I think it's better to give them the option to, like, trade the Nocturne than just, like, straight up lose my Phantom Butler. It's still at, you know, whatever health. I don't... 
Do I care about them? Like, uh, this deck does not care about leveling Zed. They don't play Ghost or anything like that. See, so, yeah, I, don't, I don't think I care about Zed leveling. You can go ahead and do that. It's more a question of, like, do I care about clearing up some of my own board space so I can run out all of this stuff? But I kind of like being able to hang back the Risen Mists. I think I go Phantom Butler. I think I actually want to bank the mana here and go Mist Onlooker Onlooker. I don't want to go Boisterous Host. I want to stay full Fearsome. Oh, that's right. That was Ephemeral. Whoops. All right. Mists Onlooker 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 it is. What's the what, what? What can they play that actually defends them here? The Stage hand. Yeah, that's not played in every list, but that does that does hurt me here. Embrace your fate, as I think I, I continue to mine. just run things out though. <laughs> if they have second stage hand, then like sure. But most of the lists I see only play like one copy. See now, now I can't really keep running things out. Is this attack even like good? Um, if I play another onlooker, then I can at least probably threaten the Zed. But if they have another, it has to be another onslaught, right? The fear grows. I think I'm dying to Hecarim no matter what. Well, actually, no, they haven't attacked with enough ephemerals. But if I can just like get the onslaught out of their hand, you know, it is it's kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm just going with everything. Diversify my threats a little bit with the Hallowed, and we see where this takes us. At the very, like, hopefully I can get the Zed here, but... I knock him down to two. Like I said, I do main deck a, uh... I do main deck a, um... Doom Beast. Awesome. Um, I like kind of have to block one just for so I don't die to Hecarim Overwhelm, right? Probably. I'm like fine trading off all these onlookers at this point. These two are like probably going under Zed. A brief engagement, but a joyous one. Okay, so now my only concern is surviving this turn. These decks don't play Deny, at least. Not the ones I've seen. <laughs> Hecarim is here. Do not deny me. They don't have any mana though, so. I'd actually love to just get rid of my entire board. Don't mind if I do. I think I lose if um, my loss condition is a second dragon ambush. I'm in a really rough spot if I harrowing and they just dragon ambush. Because they're, they're going to threaten lethal. I'm going to lose two attackers. They're going to gain. They're going to go back to 20. So we are we are losing the dragon ambush. I don't believe we are losing to anything else, especially since Nocturne should come out first and give everything on their board minus five attack. Honestly, how many Hallowed's do I have? Three. That's right. I didn't even hover the eye. I don't know what's coming out of this. I don't care. I don't care. It better be game winning. <laughs> see what it is yeah so minus five attack on their entire board um the dragon ambush might not even matter actually i'm gonna have two uh you know it'd be nice if i had mana to like replay elise but yeah dragon ambush they go to 20 i have 16 oh actually i still have lethal through dragon ambush 
That's really cool. Because of Hallowed. So we should we should be good here. Which I think is why my opponent is uh, taking so long. Good job, Nocturne. So they can twin for a blocker here. This can't twin for a blocker. This can't twin for a blocker. Oh, I assume that they are just roping out at this point. Probably open exit game. So, uh, looks like we've got about four minutes to sit here and have a discussion because Runeterra rope timers are egregiously long. Oh, they're playing something. Oh, it is Dragon Ambush. Now, we already mathed this out. We do still win here. Unless you, like, main deck Will of Ionia or Homecoming? That doesn't seem real. So I think I, I, think I lose to Twin. I think Hecarim as a blocker is enough. But barring that, you know, we are chilling. There's no reason not to go for this, right? They don't, like... You know, just in case this, this person plays Vile Feast or something. It doesn't, like, if they if they have Twin and, like, they blocked whatever the highest attack unit was, I'm still only pushing 16 damage. It's not 20, so they'd live, but... Like, my, my hand is played. I already played all three Stygian Onlookers, too, so... The only thing they could have been afraid of is Precious Pet, and they, they have Twin. Okay. Um, is there anything I can draw here? I guess I could draw another Risen Mists and technically live. Um, so I, I guess I'll play it out. I kind of wish I had um clock timers in uh, ladder. Not not for like any real purpose, just so I can know how much of my time has been wasted by my opponent. It's a lot. 